One listing generated me $70,000 in the past six months and we haven't gone through the holiday season yet. I'm gonna share with you guys exactly how I put together this listing on Amazon Handmade. So if you've been selling on Etsy, you've really been thinking about selling on Amazon Handmade, this is the channel you wanna follow because this is part one of many videos to come on how to get started on Amazon. So if you're interested in how to create the listing, start advertising and grow on your SEO on Amazon Handmade, make sure to hit the bell notification to be notified when I do release these videos. So today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys how I'm putting together the listing, okay? I wanna show you the listings that I'm working on. I'm gonna show you the most important things to follow. There are three most important things you need to pay attention in a listing that I'm gonna mention at the end of the video. Now I'm gonna kinda hint at it throughout the video, but there are three, the most important. If you pay attention to these things, this is what allowed this listings to do what it did because I was able to focus on those three things. Now, when you're selling on Amazon Handmade, the difference between Amazon Handmade and Pro Amazon, Pro Amazon, you pay monthly. However, when you apply to Amazon Handmade, you're kind of, you're gonna pay the fee, but if you'll get approved, that fee will be void and you don't need to pay the fee. The other thing is Amazon Handmade, this is why I like Amazon Handmade, because the item number, you don't need to have an item number. This is the strength of Amazon Handmade versus Pro Account. This is why I think there's such great opportunities on Amazon Handmade, because you can bring a product to market at no effort. Like you could just put it in, and you don't have to, because when you have a product that has many different variations, say you have 20 variations, it's going to be very expensive to pay for that, for those product numbers. And so you can move around the algorithm and and supply the need just like this. And so I think that's why it really works. So if you've been selling on Amazon and you've been thinking, hey, can I sell on Amazon Handmade? Look through the criteria. You do have to apply for it and they have to approve it. You have to send some photos of you actually, of the stages of you performing or making the product. Uh, but once you get approved, it is so much, much easier to uh, list the products on Amazon Handmade. And so, especially if you're working with companies like We Engrave, if you're interested in how to work with them and they produce the products for you, uh, and those products do qualify for handmade, make sure to check out the link in the description below. I do teach you how to get onboarded with them and you can sell with them on Etsy as well as Amazon Handmade. So check them out and that they can get you started with that. Make sure to, that you apply to Amazon Handmade and that you don't do, do just regular pro Amazon because when you start putting together the listing, it will look different. So if you're watching this video and you're not in the handmade account or if some things look different and you're just not able to post the item because it needs that item number, that UBC code, you're probably not on Amazon Handmade. So if you do get stuck, just make sure to double, double check that that's, that you're on the Amazon Handmade, that you went through the application process. Um, because I've, the, everybody that's tried to get on Amazon Handmade, the first barrier that they come across is that they're not able to list or they're not able to, to post the way I've showed them. And that's 100% of the time. The reason is, is because they haven't really got through the application process. So now this is a draft. I'm, I'm working on the next listing and I'm going to show you kind of the draft and how it looks like and what I'm paying attention to. All right. So when you're adding a product, what you're going to do is very, it's very simple. So we're going to be doing a pet, pet product or, or dog collar, right? So we're just going to click, click on pet products, dogs, leashes, and harnesses. And we find the collar and we select it. pretty, pretty straightforward. So make sure to find your listings. And sometimes you can just go on Google and type in how to find this product and, and Google can generate, or you can find answers to those questions. So if you are having a hard time finding it, you can always Google it. Now, once you've selected that, you're gonna be brought to a product listing where you can actually put the lot listing. So the things that I want you to pay attention to is like target audience is pretty straightforward. You are essentially just, who's this for? And it's obviously it's for dogs. Now you can add more like not necessarily dogs, but say dog moms, okay? Things like that, and you could keep adding. Anyways, so search term is kind of the ta tag section of it. It's basically what are people searching or typing into search to find your product. Now, is this important? Um, there isn't a debate whether these do a big difference or not. Um, these are kind of like the tags for on Etsy, but um, I still fold them out. I No matter the debate, I'm still putting them in there because I do want to rank for certain keywords. Now, when it comes to researching keywords on M Etsy, we have E-Rank. On Amazon, the best one that I found was Jungle Scout. Again, I will do more videos, uh, on, like things on jung Jungle Scout, how to product research, keyword research. Again, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you're notified. Um, by the way, I do teach the, this kind of stuff on my course. You can check out the link in the description below as well. I'm just gonna put a direct link to my course if you want to, to go deeper. I do 
I am adding more content of Amazon handmade content on there. So it's kind of like the bonus section. I have both Etsy content or Etsy course is really my bulk of it. And I'm slowly adding Amazon handmade content to it. So if you are interested to get deeper, it's going to get bigger and bigger. I'm going to add more content to it. So go ahead and check it out. Um, and it, once it gets more and more full, the price will obviously go up. So make sure to not miss out on the opportunity. Um, so anyways, once you've done your keyword research, you're going to put the, the keywords that are appropriate for search terms. Um, and uh, okay, description versus bullet points. This is the first kind of big thing I would say. Descriptions don't matter. In fact, if we click on one of the listings, you'll see that there's no description. There's no description. It is only bullet points. The bullet. Now we do need to create a description. So we're going to put something, but descriptions don't matter bullet points do, at least as it stands right now. So bullet points matter in regards to SEO and bullet points are better to read for customers than descriptions. Most customers skip the, the description and they go straight to the bullet points. So why bullet points are, so, so the way you structure bullet points, when you research on Jungle Scout or wherever you're researching, the most important keywords, make sure that those are, are the keywords that are the first keywords, okay? For several reasons, not, not only is that important for SEO, but also if customers are looking for those specific keywords, those are the kind of keywords they're gonna try to skim for when they're looking at bullet points. So I usually put them at the very beginning. So personalized dog collars, engraved ID tags, boy, girl, dog collars, right? These are the keywords that I'm, uh, um, I'm trying to make sure that they're in the very beginning for SEO and for customer sake. So that's the first thing I'm doing is I'm making sure that the first words, the very important words are in the very beginning. And then the description in that bullet point supports that those keywords. So if I'm writing personalization, I'm going to make sure that, that, that the paragraph after that talks about. And then if it's engraved, I want to make sure that the stuff uh, and like, hey, the benefit is that you don't have to get it you know, tag, jingling on your thing, whatever. You can just get it engraved on the buckle. So it's like describing the product in the benefit way. So don't just say, uh, um, you know, just the facts, right? Make sure that the facts are like, hey, this is how it benefits you. So make sure that you, when they read the bullet points, that they're educated on how these features that you are letting them know that these are the features that they're going to get, but are, but are also benefiting. So for example, uh, when we talk about quick release, right, it's a fact, it's a quick release, but I'm also, but I'm saying it in a way that it's ultimate convenience, right? I'm telling not just the fact, but I'm how it benefits. It's ultimate convenience. So it's easy on and easy off, right? So how you write these bullet points are going to be important. Now I'm going to skim through all of this. This is going to be important for your uh, packaging. So if you are using, whether you're shipping it on Amazon or you're shipping on a ship station, when you set the, the, the weight, it's going to be easier for you to create shipping labels down the road. If they buy one or two, it's going to automatically calculate. So make sure that you go through this. I'm not going to go through it with you guys right now because I don't think, I think you guys can figure it out. Now images. I just added one image. Um, but one of the things I'm going to fix and I, I need to fix this on this particular photo. Um, what, what I've done for my other photos, if you look at this photo, this is kind of, see that, that box. Once we go to the very right, look at the very right of the screen, see how close it is to the border. That is going to be important. Okay. Make sure that your photos are edge to edge. So if, if I have one dog collar, for example, it's going to be hard to do top and bottom, but they do it, but they do it on top and bottom. That's why I specifically did the photo like this, where I stacked them and spread them out a little bit because I want to get that screen. I want to get, make sure that the thumbnail is nice and big. So if we go back, this one jumps at me right off the bat, right? These are good, but, but even, but even these, um, they're, they're, they're not using up that space. This is why the, the top ones, uh, or at least the sponsor top ones are all filled in. You want to make sure that your product is edge to edge. Uh, if you type in protein, look at that. They're going to make it as big as humanly possible. It's it's really just the rule from top to bottom. Now, the, the requirement for Amazon to, to make the product, that background has to be white. So you cannot have you cannot have a textured background. So that's that's important. So whatever you're selling, whether you're selling a dog collar, the white, the background has to be white. Not like a, a off gray, white. No, it has to be pure, pure, pure white. Like like if you go on your color selection tool, select the whitest white, that's what it's supposed to be. So you can't just do a, a lighting tool. It's, it's really, uh, I don't think it won't even let you approve it if there's any shade on it. It has to be fully white. What these colors will actually, what a lot of times products will be done is they'll be, the, the whole product will be cut out 
um, and once it's cut out, the reflections on the bottom are, are added artificially because this reflection does not look natural at all. Uh, same thing with this. It's done. It's added artificially. You just replicate the the product and you you move it down, change the opacity, and you erase a, a little bit with a brush. So that's why because they want to make sure they qualify for the um, for for the Amazon photos. But however, photos after that, they don't not they don't have to, you can have a background. So just just a, something to note, uh, your thumbnail has to be white, the background does not. So those are kind of the things I want to uh, just pay attention to those things when you're making them. Okay, variations. The nice thing about Amazon handmade is you can do customization. Now, there, I've not I haven't been doing variations. And the reason for that now, even though the benefit of creating variation family is that you get SKUs, right? So if I were to sell like three of these three different colors, technically I should be able to have SKUs for them. And now it's important for my production, especially when I am a manufacturer from Etsy and I have uh, sellers that are selling my product with a print on demand relationship. I, I have them make me a SKU for each design. So that way, that way, when an order comes in, there's a SKU barcode that I can just scan and pull up the, the files off the bat. However, with Amazon, I actually just use the customization section and I'll show you what that looks like in a bit because it, the UI for customization is so much better and you're just creating one listing and you're pushing that one listing, you're investing uh, uh, advertisement dollars to that one listing. With a variation family, it breaks, breaks it apart into several different families. Now you can advertise a variation family and you can treat it like a listing, uh, but I found it, I find it that it's just easy to deal with when it's just one listing with customizations as in the variation. And I find that the UI is so much better with customization because they can just click on customization and they get all the, uh, all the options to change the product right there and then. But when you do variation family, you kind of, if, if I have variation, they select the variation and then they have to click customization. And then it's, it's adding a whole nother layer of customization. Um, also the variation uh, creates a, a good UI because, so for example, on this listing, what you can do is select the options within the customization box. You're getting to build your collar and you get to select the, the, the color, the color of buckles and things like that. So it makes the, the experience a lot more friendly. Uh, versus where you're going to have to select the variation and then you go into customization. And so, I don't know, I just, I, I personally enjoy the, just having it all in one. So that's why I, I avoid, um, variations, although you can do that. You're creating a listing family, but that's going to be what I've been doing. I've just been avoiding variations and I've been doing customization because, um, Again, and this could be a different strategy. You can either take the strategy where you create a lot of different listings uh, or different variations and you want to spread yourself wide across the Amazon platform and you're going to create different listings and different variations to target different keywords, then sure, create a variation family and in it with the, each of those variation, it'll have its own title. You could add its own title and so you could target different keywords. And so you can really spread yourself across the, you know, the Amazon that way. But my strategy has always been create one really, really good listings, whether you shop your listing, not your store, and make sure that that's, and invest all the money and all the attention into that one listing. And that's how I was able to get the $70,000 in the past six months, because I've been kind of taking that strategy. Again, I've seen people do where they did really well because they created a ton of listings. Uh, but um, again, my strategy is just focusing on one listing. And that's why I don't have, I only have like six different variations on that listing. And so the SKUs are just kind of taped on my table and I scan them if I if I see, hey, they, they got a pink mountain or a, pink, a orange mountain, I'll just scan the barcode and then I, I got my, my SKU that way. So just a little side note. Um, we're gonna, the offer is where you write the, the, the price. Now this is gonna be important when you write the price, when you do customization, if there are size changes, you're adding the number to the, the price. So, you, and I'll show you what that means. Uh, production time, um, just a few things I wanted to mention. Production times is how long it's going to take you to, to process this time. Now, when you're doing production, make sure that you note that even though I'm putting like a five days or nine days, whatever the production time is, that you treat it as if it's two days sooner. So if you do five days, just assume that your product needs to be out, out, out the door in three days. If somebody ordered a product, say across the United States at a certain time, that's the time that the, is the end for your day. So if, if it's, for example, in New York, cause I'm in Washington state, if they ordered it two hours, like it's like two hours ahead, 
that means their day ends two hours earlier than your day. So you can be overdue, even though it's still within your shipping time, right? Your day is not over and your postal office still open, but for them it's closed and therefore you're, you're now late. So make sure you always treat it like one or two days earlier than what you would normally put it. Even though you put five days or nine days, just treat it uh, much sooner, okay? Uh, once we create the listing, let's just say we finish it, we've done through all the, um, we're gonna product submit. Now, don't worry, you, you haven't you haven't really, you're not gonna start selling just yet. What we're gonna do, and it's gonna pop up right here, we're gonna go on edit, and we're gonna add customization information. This is where we get to add customization, okay? So, um, there's a whole thing to it. Uh, I don't wanna go too deep, and I think a lot of it you can figure out, but I wanna give you kind of general idea of what it looks like. So with with uh, with customization, we're gonna be adding surfaces. So surfaces can be stacked on top of each other, um, and there are different types of surfaces. Some surfaces will have a photo that you can add to it, and which means it'll add a photo layer. So if you have a PNG see-through photo, it'll layer that on top, and because it's see-through, it's gonna allow the background be seen. And so that's how we can get effects like this, right? So where we change the photo, right? The background is changing, but when we change the buckle, it really is the top buck, the top PNG file that I've photoshopped to gold that I overlaid. Now you can see all the imperfections, but most of my customers buy on cell phones and they don't see this kind of stuff. And so that's why it happens. It's just it's essentially a PNG file of a gold that's layered on top. And so the way you can do that, so there are several different um, surfaces you can add. You can add text. This is kind of the personalization. So if you are just simply giving the option to personalize, this is what you're going to, it's going to be a text box. Um, it's essentially, it essentially looks like this. Okay. Um, all the same stuff. It'll give you the option. It'll give you the option of, of giving them instructions and just the titling it. And then there's the data. It really shows it, it, like if, if you're doing things like sizes, um, if you're doing, if you're selling something that you can cut, um, and then they would need to choose a data. That's how that works. Again, it's really straightforward. This is the drop down and I like drop down more. Um, again, I like the UI of it. Most of the things for me are drop downs. These are all drop downs. Okay. Even though it doesn't look like drop downs, these are drop downs on phones. It looks like drop downs. Um, same thing here. Okay. All of this is drop downs. So, um, and, and I'll open that up and I'll show you. So images is really nice about this. If you're doing custom logo prints, uh, this is what I did banners. I don't do banners right now because I've kind of consolidated to just doing dog collars. But when I did banners, they could actually upload their logo and it could see, they could see what the banner would look like with the logo on there. So if you're selling t-shirts and you do allowing them to do custom logos or maybe mugs, this is a great feature for you to use. Okay. And then there's of course numbers. Again, you can look through them at they're very, very simple. Um, it's not that complicated, but once, once we open up drop down, essentially what you get to do again, I like drop downs because it allows you to add a thumbnail and you can add this kind of a UI feature to it. Um, you can label it, give them instructions. If if you want to and then let's just say we're going to go orange mountain okay we're just going to go orange mountain orange mountain uh, so thumbnail is where you want to add that photoshop or like that smart object if you have variations so if you're doing like say t-shirt variations uh just photoshop the t-shirt color. Now you can just take a photo of a different shirt. The transition is going to be kind of, uh, you know, finicky because it'll actually change to different, which is nothing wrong as long as you get it as close as possible. Um, but the thumbnail preview is essentially this right here. This is the preview, um, which I think both are important because you want them to see again, UI is, is critical. If you get your UI good, it's going to be, make a big difference for your, uh, for your conversion. So make sure you have thumbnail and preview. They are different sizes. So it's, I believe this one is, um, yeah, they, they do have different uh, requirements for the minimum uh, for, for each of those. So make sure that you have two different uh, types of photos. So when you create that, you can add, like I said, another drop down. In my case, I did do that. Another one, I did the buckles, the PNG of a buckle. Now this one means I didn't add anything. I just let the background be by itself. I just pretty much didn't add a photo. On this one, I did add a photo, a PNG of the, the gold components. Okay, and then after that, now I could add personalization to be appearing here. I don't want to overcomplicate it, so I just left it as is. And so you get to essentially, um, they, they all they do do is they select a font, and then once they select a font, they write the 
the personalization. Now on my Shopify, I did I did allow them. So like the, the, the fabric is, you can choose the fabrics, you can change the buckles. And on the, you know, I did allow them to see what their, you know, um, see their name pop up on here. But that's because when you're on a website, you're already intending to buy, you're kind of already kind of having a little bit more of uh, intentionality to what you're gonna do. So I did add that feature and actually kind of cool, that it turns out really well on Shopify, the app that I'm using. I forgot the name of it, but on Amazon, again, you're competing with other people. You got very little attention span. That's why I don't want to overcomplicate the, the, the feature. So, um, and so I just, everything after that is, um, is really just not going to appear on there. So I, that's that you don't want to overdo it, even though they give you so much cool options, which I wish this wasn't existing on Amazon, on Etsy, but they don't. Um, so that's kind of how I create the customization. So the three most important things that I focused on my listings, and it is not even the price. Um, in fact, I actually charge more on Amazon than I do on Etsy. The first one is you got to focus on bullet points. Make sure that you get the keywords and make sure those keywords uh, within within that paragraph are salesy, right? This is going to really push your customers a little further. So it's gonna improve conversion and it's gonna help with SEO. The second thing is photo. Make sure you have edge to edge and if possible, top to bottom, okay? You don't wanna stretch it, but make sure that you really fill it up because it's gonna improve your click-through rate. And click-through rate is one of the first metrics that Amazon, even Etsy cares about because it is the earliest metrics that allows the algorithms to really figure out what your product is versus buying it actually takes a lot more time to accumulate the uh, conversion rate than it does click through rate so that's why you want to make sure that you make it as clickable as possible and the last one is title title is really important this is strictly for seo and the way again a really cheap way to do it the cheapest way to do it is look at your competitors and see the kind of titles they have and really replicate so for example one, one of the things i noticed is that it is uh sizes are in the in the titles like almost every single listing has the word the sizes i'm going to use that that means it's going to be a requirement for me um now with this one genuine leather is a big one so they're obviously capitalizing on that um but whatever I like the word customization, bam, that's it. So, so what are the top search keywords? Use Jungle Scout. Um, those are going to be really, really important. So again, make sure you've got bullet points. You got, uh, you got photos, edge to edge and titles. Those are the three most important things in your listings when you're putting together an Amazon handmade listings. So hopefully you found this video to be useful. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification for the part two, three, and so on, because I will be showing you exactly how I run my Amazon handmade business on this channel, as well as Etsy tips to grow your Etsy business. All right, until next time, you guys have a good one.